I'm going to demonstrate how to generate 1D shear wave velocity profile from a field file sec to format. I first go to this process and then uh, select this 1D S velocity profile from seismic field data in sec 2. So I have this 1 through 8 field files in sec 2 format. So I select all of them and then program detected original field geometry which I want to display so I click yes and it shows this configuration so I can see all the uh, receiver arrays stayed at the same place this is the horizontal surface coordinate and these are source locations for different field files here I confirm this is the correct one so I close it. Now the program asks me if I want to run the setup anyway or just save into files as as our encoded data in PS format at this moment. And I choose to save the data as a uh, intermediate output here. Now the program informs me the process will move to the next step which is a dispersion image generation and I click OK and then I click run image generation. So it generates dispersion images and it's done and now uh, it will move to the second step of dispersion analysis which is uh, the extraction of dispersion curves from the uh, generated dispersion images. Now it tells me input file has dispersion images for the same surface location, which is correct. Would you like to stack them? So I click yes. Now it shows the stacked dispersion image from which I'm ready to extract the dispersion curve. First click bounds. Then I click several points along this trend. Okay, and then uh, it's extract now I save it now it asks me if I want to move to the next step which will be inversion yes I go to run yes I confirm and now it calculates final shear wave velocity profile so this is the first output from that automatic uh, inversion. So I can take this as the final output uh, or I can go further to find a better match. The dispersion curves, this is uh, velocity and this is frequency here. Uh, both curves show a match very closely and on top Okay, it shows this match. It's a 88.18% match. So I remember that and, and see if my manual change increases the match. Okay, now I move like this. Now it, it changed. It increased that uh, match a little bit. And now I change it like this. It decreased. It does not change it decreased again and uh, so I move like this and it keeps increasing now okay decreased and then I can actually run the automatic inversion again by going into here and run okay it showed 87 like this probably this looks more realistic so now I uh, take this as my final output. So save here. I call it as a manual final output. Okay. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to generate a 2D velocity cross section from field files in SEC2 format. First, go to process and then select the 2D S velocity cross section from SEG2 files here. I have 20 field files, so I select them 
all of them at the same time. And now it's going to show me field setup. I click yes. Now it shows me this field configuration, which I confirm is correct. 24 channel receiver array with the 1.5 meter receiver spacing, 9 meter source offset, and the entire source receiver configuration moved each time by another 9 meter. So it moved 19 times to generate a total 20 field files. So I close this one. So I confirmed the encoded source receiver configuration uh, is correct. So I choose this option, save input files now, and skip the setup. Okay. Now it shows me process will move to next step, dispersion image generation. Okay. Now I click run. Now it informs me it's going to move to the second step of analysis, which is a dispersion curve extraction. And first I click bounds. And I choose no to set up a new trend of bounds here. And I interpret this as my uh, fundamental mode trend. So I focus into this zone like this and then extract. And I know this is higher mode. And I'm going to delete this part also. And I add one more point here, probably one more again, here like this. Okay, so I like this. Okay, I save it. And then I see the fundamental mode trend changed a lot here like this. So I'm going to delete this bounds trend and set up the new one here. Like this. Okay, an extract, and I know these are higher modes, just delete them. And this may be a little bit too high. So like this, say. Now I'm done with tracking all our 20 dispersion curves. So now it's going to move to the next step, which is here, inversion. And now uh, I'm going to just here, run it. It goes through inversion of each individual dispersion curve in the input files. And now it's done.